And Knudsen will settle in at the free throw line. Number 45, And he drops in the first end. He missed four games on a Christmas Day practice. He took an elbow in the head from Luke Sigma, his teammate, suffered a concussion, missed four games, and this is his first game back. Christmas Day. Christmas Day practice. Wow. That's a good Christmas present from Luke. I guess so. Downs with nice position, earning that rebound. Knudsen flashing out at Bolden that time. You see, with Will Foster, he can do that. He can stay with uh, Matt Bolden a little bit longer because no, uh, Will Foster does not roll to the basket as well as a Josh Heifelt does. Cargo up off the bench and an offensive foul called on Ethan Niedemeyer. So he picks up two, actually three now. That's nine team fouls on Portland. Well, that is Nick Ravio's fault because when you got a guy coming to set a screen for you, you can't be moving. Way too early, Nick started dribbling way too early before Nathan got or Ethan got over there, and that made the defender move. And see, that's he's moving, and he steps right into Stevens' hip, and that is an offensive foul. And Coach Revito now with two players with three personal fouls. Luke Sigma and Ethan Niedemeyer, both with three personal fouls, and we still have eight minutes and 19 seconds to play in the first half. So his bench is going to get tested in this game. It's obvious. Yeah, with uh, two of your starters with three fouls, or uh, actually Luke's a, a reserve, but two guys that play vital roles for you in the course of the game are sitting on the bench right now with three fouls with eight minutes left in the first half the bench is definitely going to be tested here of course Luke from Bellevue Washington now a sophomore father uh, Jack Sigma you played against Jack how good was he Jack you know don't let him fool you either that uh, they said he always had a shake after the game that, that was not a milkshake after the game. <laughs> no, he he was uh, he developed that uh, sigma shot, what they call the post turning and facing the post, and then stepping away. And he had that kind of unorthodox shot where he held it behind his head, and no one could block it at being 6'10". So, no, uh, Jack uh, won a championship with the Sonics in 1979. Bolden, 17 feet long, rebound by Rivio. And he'll dribble with the left hand. Pargo stops him. Smelders posting up inside. Campbell now with it. And now he backs it out. That's a 5'9 Campbell being guarded by 6'8 Micah Downs. You talk about trying to see through the forest. <laughs> Rivio. Look at Pargo in that defense. Double dribble call. Pargo stood him up and kept him right in front of him. Five-point Gonzaga lead. Papa Murphy's on Gonzaga game days for the slam dunk deal. Get a large three-topping pizza for only $8.99. Papa Murphy's take and bake pizza, handmade in our kitchen, home baked in your oven. I'd like a little slab of pizza right now from Papa Murphy's. They got a good uh, lasagna, too. Wouldn't that go good for courtside on a piece of pizza? Yeah. And uh, Pop Murphy's guys are out there listening. Greg and I could <laughs> no. use uh, no. use one really. I think that's, a, that's in a contract that's illegal or something. Oh, they something can't deliver it to the game? I don't know. They can't deliver it? Well, they can deliver it if you're going to buy it. <laughs> Greg Heister and Craig Elo were courtside in Spokane, Washington for the start of the West Coast Conference play for Gonzaga and the University of Portland. We're inside the McCarthy Athletic Center. Gonzaga with a five-point lead at 21-16. Heitfeld, nice defense there by Smelders, just standing its ground and deflecting the ball. It still looked like Smelders extended his hands into Josh Heitfeld's space, so there could have been some contact, but there was nothing called. B.J. Porter into the game now for Portland, number 24, a guy who brings energy to the Pilots. Smelders backing down on downs. Little jump hook to the middle. And that's a solid shot. 
it is a solid shot, but the Zags could have done a little bit more defensively and helping when he turned to the middle. They should have been someone right there to challenge him when he spun away from Micah Downs. Nice fake by Bolden Downs. This is a deep three. Wow, he was out by the left swap side. Yeah, that's near his hometown of Kent, right? <laughs> I mean, he was way out there. No kidding. That was a long, long three. Actually, I think he's from Kirkland. Kirkland. Hey, they're K's. <laughs> they're all over there. That last field goal by Portland ended an 837 drought. Smelders jump shot. No good. Down. Skies for the rebound. Some good minutes now for Micah Downs in his first half. That is good because Micah did not start against Tennessee and if there's been any questions about him it's always been does he play consistently and there's another good move and another great pass by Matt Bolden. Moving without the basketball I love and when guys do it look at the results and uh, Micah went right to the rim and uh, Matt found him and got him the basketball. Who was the best as uh, Knutson earns free throws or one anyways chance for three. But who was the best player at Gonzaga during this stretch of moving without the basketball, in your opinion? Um, boy, you're testing my memories, but uh, war number three. Oh, Adam Morrison. He was absolutely the best at that. Oh, okay. I thought you were asking. Okay. You already had your mind made up. I think so. Yeah, okay. I think so. Do you agree? No, but I, because he was offensive minded. He was phenomenal without the ball. That's how you get open. And, and if you set a screen, a good screen, you usually are the guy that's going to get open. So I think uh, that's another way of, of, of moving or having, uh, you know, opportunities come up for you on the offensive end. Will Foster into the game now. You just saw him throw the ball off of Micah Downs' his noggin. And now he's posting up on Smelders and calling for the ball. Yeah, I don't think if Will gets the rebound, he's told to dribble. Uh, oh, what a pass! And finished by Fargo. Right now, Matt Bolden on the top of his game, coming he off is, of a high-point game against Tennessee. But I think the other things that he does on the floor, the passing, the moving, the defense, he's, uh, he's playing very, very well right now. And they're going to need that through the whole WCC season from Matt Bolden. He can't take nights off and get that inconsistent thing later yeah. above it. And in fairness, as uh, we have six on the shot clock, Rivio driving to the free throw line, fall away, bounces out, downs with a rebound. In fairness, I don't think any of these players take nights off. It's, it's just consistency has been an issue. It, it's, uh, yeah, that's all it is. And, and I totally agree with you. That's a bad uh, way of putting it that guys take nights off because none of them do. I mean, we all enjoy playing basketball, even if it's in the gym. Right? Oh. <laughs> Stephen Gray with a big three over Stoll. And Gonzaga now leading it by nine. And I tell you, Gonzaga doing a nice job. Portland 7 of 21 right now from the field for 33%. And if you're wondering, they're still way up there at field goal percentage. 13th in the country, holding teams to 37%. So right now, the defensive will of the Zags is getting to the pilots. Gonzaga on an 8 to 2 run, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Campbell stops. And misses Gray with the rebound. Tough shot, tough defense. Made the tough shot. Nice vision by Pargo that time to find Downs. Tell you that move he made the other night on uh, the Tennessee player. Boom! Was back. Oh, yeah. that was but that's a huge shot by Matt Bolden. He's Bolden. doing it all. Bolden now with five, and Gonzaga leads by double figures. Portland shooting uh, under 32% in this first half, Craig. And, you know, the one thing that you got to credit Gonzaga on, even during their slide when they lost four or five and three in a row, you know, they're still a really good defensive team. And this is still maybe the best defensive team as we watch some of the great offensive plays here in this first half. This is still one of the best defensive teams that Mark Hughes had. No question about it. And we're seeing the offense of uh, Matt Bolden, the nice pass to Pargo, bounce pass that got Pargo an easy basket, and then a nice read by Maddie, seeing the defender back off of him. But I think we've always been so intrigued with the offensive end by Gonzaga that we never really talked about what this team is really doing. And I totally agree with you in that three-game skid. 
they were close games. Yeah. Yeah. And I think really it was the offense that let them down more, more than, than anything. Yeah, exactly. I think the loss against Arizona followed up by the, the loss against UConn and the way they lost those games kind of knocked their confidence a little bit. And frankly, it took them a few games to get it back. They appear to have it back. They do. And I, and I think it was a huge win at going into Tennessee playing in front of 22,000 people. That's not always easy. So I think uh, 